In section 4.2, we will discuss null spaces, column spaces, and linear transformations. When we talk about the null space, the null space of an n by n matrix A is the set of all solutions to the homogeneous linear system AX is equal to zero. When we use the notation, we use this notation here, and we read this null of A. So given a set, excuse me, given a matrix A, we want to find a spanning set for the null of A. So what are they asking? We want to know the set of all solutions to this system here. AX is equal to zero, the zero vector, this homogeneous linear system. So of course, given this matrix A, the easiest way to find the set of all solutions is to put this matrix into RREF, reduced row echelon form. You should now actually go through the EROs and you will come up with this matrix here. I Means here, and we notice that we have a pivot here and a pivot here, which tells me that x2 and x4 will be free variables. We now get this solution to the linear system. Putting this into parametric vector form, we notice we'll have x2 times the vector negative 2, 1, 0, 0, plus x4 times the vector negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1. Therefore, our null of A would be every linear combination of these two vectors here. Say we can call this vector U and this vector V. So we can say that the null of A is equal to the span of these two vectors, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1. So again, the null of A is the set of all solutions to this homogeneous equation, and we notice that explicitly it's given by the description of the span of these two vectors. Now, let's look at the same matrix A, and we want to know is U in the null of A? where u is given by this vector here. So what does that mean? We want to know since if u is in the null of a, what will be true? That a times u should equal the zero vector. So what do we want to know? We want to find this a times u and see if we get the zero vector. So let's work this out. We would have negative 3 plus 4 plus 3 minus 4 for our first entry. Likewise, we would get the second and the third row. And we notice here that we get 0, 0, and 0. And so, since a times u is equal to the zero vector, we say, yes, u is in the null of a. So you should now actually take the time to see if v is in the null of a. So pause the video and work this example. Working this here, this a times v, we want to get the zero vector. And we notice when doing this, this is not equal to the zero vector. So we can say, no, v, the vector v is not in the null 
of A. We now have a theorem that the null space of an M by N matrix A is a subspace of Rn. So when doing this proof, we have to do what we've done to show that um, any space is a subspace of Rn. So we have to check and see if the zero vector is in the null of A. Then we have to see if it is closed under addition and closed under multiplication. Keep in mind when we see this null space here, we're just talking about the null of A. When we say the null of A, that when I have AX, we should get the zero vector. So looking at our first property, if we let our x be the zero vector, then a times the zero vector is indeed the zero vector. So we can say that the zero vector is in the null of a. So our first property holds. For our second property, let's assume that u is in the null of a. And if u is in the null of a, this implies that a times this vector u is equal to the zero vector. Likewise, if u v is in the null of a, then a times v is equal to the zero vector. So what do we want to show? We want to show that the vector u plus the vector v is also in the null of a. So to do this, we take a of the u plus v. By properties, we know that this is equal to a of u, the vector u plus a of the vector v. And here we see that a of u and a of v are equal to the zero vector. Adding the zero vectors together, we get the zero vector. So therefore, a, I mean u plus v is also in the null of a. This shows that it is closed under addition. Now let's look at closure under multipli scalar multiplication. So let's let k be a scalar and u in the null of a. We want to show that k times this vector u, it should be vectors, is also in the null of a. So here a of ku, we want to do this. And since k is a scalar by our properties, we know that we can take our scalar out and we'll have a times the vector u. And again, we have that a u is equal to the zero vector. So therefore k times this a u is k times the zero vector, which is equal to the zero vector. So therefore indeed k u is in the null of a. And we can make the conclusion that um, the null of A is a subspace of Rn. Now we want to talk about the column space of an M by N matrix. We say the column space of an M by N matrix is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. And so therefore the column of A is equal to this A times the vector X. It's a set of all linear combinations. We use this notation column of A. So if A is equal to the set of vectors A1, A2, through An, then the column of A is just the linear combination of, of these vectors. So column of A is actually just equal to the span of our vectors, A1, A2, through An. So given this matrix A we've seen before, if we want to find a spanning set for the column of A, what do we want to do? We just want to find a set of vectors that span this space. 
So finding the column of A, we see it spans each of these individual columns. So we say that the column of A is equal to the span of each of the vectors in my matrix. And what does that represent? Of course, just the linear combination of each of these vectors. So now given the same matrix A, we want to know is U in the column of A where U is given by 1, 2, 3. So what are we really asking? We want to know is this system consistent? So let's look. If we label each of these columns A1, A2, A3, and A4, so these are our individual vectors, okay. what do we notice here? This vector U happens to be A1. So, we want to know, can U be written as a linear combination of the other spaces? We can actually easily see that if we let X1 equal 1, A1, okay, and then let all of our other constants equal 0, then, of course, we indeed get the vector 1, 2, 3. So what would the solution to this system look like? x squared is equal to x1, 2, 3, and 4 will be the vector 1, 0, 0, 0. So is u in the um, column of A? Yes, it is. Now we want to know if V is in the column of A, where V is equal to 1, 0, 1. So we notice we look at our vectors here, it's not as easy to determine. We have to do a little work here. And so what we really want to see is, is AX equal to this vector V? So can V be written as a linear combination of the um, vectors? And what does that really mean? This is asking us, is this consistent? So what do we have to do? We'll do what we've done before. If we write A augmented with V, we want to get a consistent system. We notice if we augment A with the vector V, all we have to do is get it into row echelon form because we really just want to know if the system is consistent. We don't have to get it into reduced row echelon form because we can see that it's consistent from REF and if it's consistent this implies that V is indeed in the column of A which is also saying that we can write V as a linear combination of the vectors of the column of A since the system is consistent. So the answer to this question is yes. So we now have a theorem. The column space of an M by N matrix A is a subspace of RM. So I want you to actually think about the proof of this on your own. When, think about, when thinking about this proof, given that A is equal to the vectors a1, a2 through an, and consider the vector u equaling c1, a1 through cn, an, and v is equal to d1, a1 through dn, an. We want to make sure the properties of a subspace hold. So what would make the zero vector be included for the first? And then is it closed under addition for our second? And is it closed under scalar multiplication for our third? So please work out this proof in your notes. So the sub subspaces of vector spaces other than Rn are often described in terms of linear transformations instead of 
a matrix A. So we're going to have these definitions. The kernel is the linear transform uh, tr the kernel of a set. I'm sorry. The kernel of a linear transformation is the set of all u in v such that the transformation of u is equal to zero. This looks exactly like our null space for A. So our kernel is like the null space, but when we're talking about linear transformations. And the range of a linear transformation is the set of all vectors in W such that this T of X is equal to W for W in my um, set W. And this looks like our column of A. Okay, where A is the standard matrix. So it's kind of our A X is equal to this W. When we talk about T of X equals this A X. And so we use the terminology kernel for our null space and range for our column space when we're looking at linear transformations. Now, this chart gives us a contrast between the null of A and the column of A for M by N matrix. I won't go through them all, but you can see the parallels. That um, For one, the null of A is a, is a subspace of our N, where the column of A is a subspace of our M. And you can go through these and see the compares and contrasts between the null and the columns. For your reading assignment, I would like for you to define null space, so null of A, and define column space, which is column of A, and for your third part, so you do your definitions, column of A and null of A, and for part three, you want to find an explicit um, description of the null of A, <coughs> excuse me, by listing a vector that spans this null space given here, <coughs> excuse me, as well as the column of A for this matrix given.